Stop so making so any noise. <laughs> we'll open the meeting now with the Pledge of the Flag led by Nikki Cummings. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Pastor Eddie Stiff will lead us in the invocation. Would you bow your heads? Father, we just thank you for this evening, God. I thank you for Dr. Cerency and the board, Father, and the leadership team that you have assembled to lead this generation into tomorrow with excellence and education. Yes. God, we continue to give you thanks for the safety, Father God, and the vision that you're giving um, these students, God, and Father God, these teachers who lead them, Father God, in educating them and giving them hope for tomorrow. Father, we just ask that you continue to lead God and direct our community as, Father, we are making a comeback and leading the students of today and setting the example for this state and this nation in excellence in education. Will you continue to bless the leadership, continue to bless our community, and continue to have your way? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Okay, we'll start with um, the presentation. We're going to recognize the Miller Middle School and Crescent City High School soccer teams, if you'll come up and your representative. Oh, y'all get to stand up on the stage. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We wanted to take the time to recognize our Miller Middle School girls soccer team. Um, we had 10 games and they did a great job. They went undefeated. They were 10-0. Oh, wow. That's right. <laughs> Coach Daisy did a wonderful job and I'd like Coach Daisy to have a couple words. My name is, uh, I'm Coach Daisy. I'm not good at talking with a lot of crowd, but um, I'm really happy with my girls. Um, we had at least four or five girls that never played before and improved a lot. Um, another thing that you didn't mention, um, we had no goal scored against us. Wow. Oh <laughs> so, what a defense. Um, So I'm really happy and my, I'm proud of my girls and hope, I hope they do come back next year. Well, we do too. Yeah. I don't have much. Did Felicia get a picture? Felicia, I'm sure. Did you get a picture? Tim, you want to stand up there? Mr. Adams, you want to stand up here? Tim? He might break the camera. No, he won't. soccer team. Be patient as they make it all the way up to the stage. We will. Take your time. <laughs> the stars of the show. You tall ones can get in the back. Yeah, don't stand in front of soul. <laughs> Or do like girls and do it sideways. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. Again, this is our, our boys soccer team from Crescent City High School. We're so very proud of them. They had a season of 16, 11, and 1, I believe it was. And they played schools well outside of their class, meaning we're a 2A school. They played schools that are 3A, 4A, so on and so forth. And we've made it this year as a record all the way to the regional finals. So knowing as a school of 567 students, we can have students who play against schools with 14, 1,500 students. We're so very impressed with their ability this year as a, as a team awesome. sticking together through thick and thin. Okay? So let me introduce uh, head coach Jeff Lee. He's going to talk about his players, the captains, so on and so forth. Coach. Thank you. 
Yeah, I was just really proud of the way they improved throughout the year and stuck together in their sportsmanship, always showing class whenever we traveled to go play. And like Dr. Shelby said, we competed against um, schools that had well over like 2,000 kids when we have 500. But um, I just wanted to um, mention the kids' names, starting off with our captains. Um, we have Moises Consuelos, captain, Elias Sagari, captain, Hector Cruz, captain, he's not here right now. And we also have um, Alex Galvin, his senior, Emmanuel Dominguez, Juan Cruz, Saul Opreza, Rogelio Baltazar, Emmanuel Ariola, Jesus Escobedo are all seniors. And then we have 11th graders, Alex Ocampo, Enrique Espinoza, Hernan Rodriguez, Ivan Reynosa, Josue um, Consuelos. In the 10th graders, we have Christian Lopez, Alejo Cruz, Fernando Jimenez Cruz, and um, our freshman, Abed <coughs> Perez, and Roger Ocampo. And they, we, we had a couple goals scored against us, not like the um, middle school, <laughs> but um, they did really well, and I'm, I'm very proud of what they did. Okay, we're at the public hearing part of our meeting, and um, the first item is adoption of policy five. Oh, yep, we sure do. Sorry, I'm jumping the gun. We've got a presentation before we do public hearing. Thank you for keeping me straight. Oh, sorry. Are you going to introduce them? Or you want yes, me? yes, oh, yes, okay. I am. I got rattled. Uh, uh, well, there's no one here to introduce. Lucy. Right, but I'm just saying I don't have any names oh. here on my agenda. Oh. Hey, Lu I'm sorry, Lucy. I can introduce myself. How Please about do. that? Yes. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Buenas noches a todos. My name is Lucia Valdivia. I'm here with the Migrant Education Program, and I need my glasses to see who's in the audience, I think. Uh, some of my ESL students were going to come in. Are you here? Mis estudiantes están aquí? No? Okay. Well, Daisy from our office is here, and I see Mrs. Ramos here. Well, thank you, dear board. Thank you for having us. Um, our mission is very simple. It's to uh, very much like the mission of the school board to promote, promote academic excellence as we empower families as their children's first teachers and bring them closer to economic self-sufficiency by providing educational resources and support services. And we are located next to the most beautiful campus on Putnam County, Miller Middle. Don't worry, Lucy always tells me what to do too. <laughs> And um, in our center here in Crescent City, we're located here because this is where most of our community is located. We receive funding from federal programs under Title I Part C, the Migrant Education Program, Title III, English Language Learners, Title III, Immigrant Students. We have a, an interesting grant from the Department of Labor, um, the Farm Worker Career Development Program, IME Becas. This is a grant from the Government of Mexico to assist uh, our community in receiving basic education services. And uh, this year, we were able to bring back to the district the EL Civics Grant to continue to provide ESL classes for our adult service, um, our, our adult community. Um, go ahead, Daisy. And the friendly faces that you see there, we have two advocate recruiters in Palatka. We have a parent liaison house at Crescent City High School. 
We have five of us at Crescent City um, at the center, and our center basically serves as a one-stop uh, center where the whole family can come and we're able to provide services for the whole family in whatever they may need, from uh, child, care, child care services to social services, tutoring, academic counseling, post-secondary, and um, um, vocational careers. So anything that the family may need, they're able to find assistance and without leaving our office. Um, we also have the adult ESL classes there uh, from six to eight, and parental involvement activities as well as translation and support services. Um, this is just some of the, in raw numbers, this is basically what we serve. Um, you have, um, um, you can see, when I was looking at the numbers, I was really tired. I wonder why I was so tired. Uh, we see a lot of families. In, <laughs> this is just month to month. And of course, it fluctuates. But um, this, uh, and then this past month, we have been assisting with testing a lot also. So sometimes two of us go to different schools to assist with testing. Go ahead, Daisy. And I am not going to read this, but just for the board and, and whoever got the PowerPoint, this is basically the definition of who a migrant student is, because there's still a myth about who a migrant student is. In Crescent City, we have a lot of uh, people here who are no longer migrant, because the eligibility is only three years after families have moved into the county. And if they don't make another move, then they are no longer migrant. Go ahead, Daisy. Then your English language learners, they may or may not be migrant, and these are people who may or may not be born in the U.S., and English is their second language, so they're learning English, and this is also a um, children born in um, going to the K, in our K-12 system. Go ahead, uh, Daisy. Our immigrant students are children ages 3 to 21 who are born outside of the U.S. and who have been in the U.S. no more than three full academic years and not born in Puerto Rico, even though we have had an influx from children from Puerto Rico. Go ahead, Daisy. And our IME becas is a special collaboration that we have with the government of Mexico for the last 10 years. They have been giving us money to support our efforts in providing uh, educational services in Putnam County. We have a very strong collaboration with them and they assist us in anything that we may need. Daisy? This is our English civics class. Uh, we have a lot of fun. This was when the first week that we started. We happened to have a birthday and we celebrated sing singing happy birthday with our students. So this was just um, the ill civics class uh, seeks to introduce our newcomers into the civic life of the US so they can partake in all of the civic life. In our farm worker career development program, it is a program that we are able to help our students who graduate from high school and sometimes our students who have dropped out of high school who want to go into vocational school and our grant pays for whatever tuition tools um, or training that they may not qualify for financial aid. So this is a very important grant for us to have. Um, and go ahead, Daisy. And just last February 10th, we took a field trip uh, on a Saturday morning to Jacksonville to the apprenticeship uh, career fair where we exposed our st um, some Crescent City high, st high School students and some non-former students to high wage, high demand careers in the building trades. Here our students had first hand opportunity to talk to the building trades uh, people that review the applications and they were actually asking how is it that I get to the top of that list if I submit my application. They were able to do hands-on training, uh, welding uh, simulations, and um, they also had a crane. So we were able to drive that crane, all of us. <laughs> Go ahead, Daisy. And we did take one young lady from Crescent City High that said she wants to be a welder. I believe she's in the welding class. Um, you know, so we're hoping that she will become one of our one of our apprentices. But you know, we do all of these things. But what is the real impact? If you see the little arrow there, um, the the arrow, the red arrow, is going to Betty. And Betty, when she was a little girl, she was a binational student. She was one of those little girls that lived half of the year in Mexico and half of the year here. She was enrolled in the migrant program because her family was migrant. She was, of course, an ELL student. Then she became an um, an honor student when she was in high school because bilingual people are, you know, smarter. 
And then she enrolled in the Ime Becca's program because of course she wanted to get her basic education credentials from her um, second country. And then after she finished, um, she went ahead and enrolled with us in the Farm Worker Career Development Program because she wanted to become a nurse, which is a high dem demand, high wage um, career. And on December 2016, she became Nurse Betty. Aww. And now she works in our ER the land, That's and she wonderful. has been the happiest ever since. Betty is actually uh, featured on our statewide magazine as one of the highest wage earners for our program. She started making $29 an hour when she left our program. Um, you know, so that, that is when you come down to what is it that the migrant program does, basically this is what it does. And I have another lady here, um, she, she's a little shy in the corner. You're gonna meet here Miss Maribel Ramos. Uh, Daisy, Senora Maribel. Miss Maribel Ramos, puede pasar? I'm going to embarrass her all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Maribel Ramos started with us as an ELSL student. She was the parent of migrant students. And then, uh, of course, she's a parent. Then she enrolled in the Farm Worker Career Development Program. And now, after getting her GED, she is a CNA. Wonderful. <laughs> And uh, right before she got her CNA, she also got her GED. So uh, she did all of this throughout the collaboration that we're able to have in the same office without leaving Crescent City at all. So she became a great role model for her children. Congratulations. Hijos tiene? Congratulations. She has four children. And we're, you were the first graduate, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she graduated before her children, so she made it. Yay. <laughs> Algo que quiera decir? Thank you for all. Congratulations. Right. Muchísimas gracias. So after meeting Ms. Maribel, meet some of our newest graduates. We have Jessica Lopez Quintana, a dental assistant. We have Carmen Salgado, an LPN, and Janelli Cruz, an LPN. And then we have some GED graduates, and we have two in that picture. We have Stephanie Valdivia and Justa, I do not remember her last name, I think it's Diaz. Um, but um, Stephanie was a, a, a former Putnam County School uh, student, and then she dropped out. Justa is an adult student, and she just recently had, got her high school diploma. And we have Mar Marlette Torres Procopio and Ivan Medina. All of this just happened this year. And of course, we also do classroom and community activities. We were invited to visit Middleton Burney Elementary School to share some binational heritage uh, with our first graders, uh, with Ms. Bratcher's class. And then I was invited to the Girls Can event in Palatka. That was um, about, about a couple of Fridays ago. Yes. It was very enlightening. And go ahead, Daisy. And in migrant education, we do believe that higher education is a family event. Our families and our parents do want our children to achieve higher academic standards, and they do want, we do want our children to go to uh, college or vocational schools. And we did a, uh, we partnered with the ESOL department and with Crescent City High. So we had the um, University of South Florida come over and talk to our parents and students, and it was highly successful. We're gonna continue that. Uh, and we also took our students on a road trip to Daytona State, and they love that. Um, right now, we're taking it easy. We're looking forward to the summer. Here we have a picture with our all of the summer um, exchange, the binational exchange teachers that come to Florida, and we have one beautiful young lady dancing at the um, end of the year celebration. If you guys need more information, this is my um, contact information. And if you have any questions, I'm open for questions. Have you won any international awards lately, Lucy? Uh, just from the council lit. Uh, yeah. It's pretty special. I don't, think, I don't think people really realize how, how dynamic our program is down here and mm -hmm. what, what Linda and you and your staff have put together in the lives that you've impacted. Thank you. Very and proud. all of these successes are just wonderful. Yeah, and I didn't tell you all of them. I'm trying to make a book. <laughs> I started trying to make a book because um, 
it, it is just so much success and until you sit down and put it everything put everything in writing and um, for Padam County being so small we're actually a highly recognized program because of the support that we have always enjoyed from the school board historically I mean I've been working here 20 some years and we have always had the support so thanks to that support we have been recognized nationally and internationally because of what we're able to do and of course we have a great community to be able to serve and do what we do it's wonderful thank, thank you, you very Lucy. much thank you, thank you Daisy. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on to the public hearing part of our agenda. The first item is the adoption of policy number 5112.01 and bylaw number 0172 per NEOLA updates 17.2 and 18.1. Madam Chair, I'd like to bring them both up for discussion. Okay. Um, the first one I read several times and I actually was thinking of Jane you to read it because uh, it just doesn't make sense to me and my papers are out of order. So I'm not well, I read them, but it was a week ago, so I don't even remember what it was. It's 5112.01. Yes, it was, wasn't it? It says that the, we're not going to let them be in our schools if they can't graduate by the time they're 17 that year. Well, they have to be, they can't, 18. Well, no, the way this, the way, and I'm sure, you know, Neola did it, so they're going somehow by the law. This is what was confusing to me. It said that if they, won't have enough credits to graduate right. by the time they're 19, they have to leave when they're 17. That's the way I understood it. Now, like I said, I read it four or five times and really right. was never quite sure that's what it was saying. I think that's exactly what it says. But Jane, you, would, you being the old time, full time guidance counselor, uh, it, the problem is when you get a child that's 17 years old and there's no way that they're going to be able to complete by the time they reach that age, the state does force you to find an alternative method or else they're going to have to exit the public school. I don't like that, but uh, there are kids that may turn 19 that are there just to cause problems. So, Jane, and I listen to you. To and so, what I think what they're saying too is typically you're 17 your senior year of high school. So if you start your senior, what should be your senior year of high school, and you're, you know, lacking 10 or 12 credits, there's no way you're going to graduate by the time you were 18. But it said 19, you're saying. It is. Can I read it? Absolutely. <clears throat> In order to provide reasonable consistency of maturity levels, among students in the regular high school program, no person shall be permitted to attend the regular high school program after attaining the age of 19 or after previously obtaining a high school diploma. Those who attain the age of 19 during the school year may complete that school year. Persons who are 17 years old or older and who by earning the credits offered at the school per academic year, cannot meet graduation requirements, including GPA, prior to the end of the school year during which they attain the age of 19, shall not be permitted to attend the regular high school program beyond the end of the academic year in which they obtain the age of 17. So if they're still in 10th grade and they're 17, and it's not possible for them to graduate by the time they're, they're 19, 19, then they have to leave our schools. 
hopefully they've been enrolled in credit recovery trying to advance them beyond the academic day to catch up and uh, we and do. the extra credit afforded by the seven period day that's also another way to get the extra credit yeah, we, we do have we do have trip wires. graduation coaches too and and they yeah. yeah we do have trip wires to try to stop that that's right and they've made okay. arrangements for students that are yeah. exceptional ed students those students can it's a okay, it just every time I read it, it got a little more confusing. Yeah. But reading it slowly out loud, it I'll do that it, next yeah. time. <laughs> okay. Read it to Morris I, next I, time. Yeah, really. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we approve the adoption of policy number 5112.01. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Now, is that including bylaw? Zero one seven two. No, bylaw zero one seven two is something different. That uh, one and that one, I just wanted to point out. Members. I think that perhaps in another school district, there must have been a problem with school board members going on to school campuses. Yeah, because we've never had. We haven't had a problem, but this is a new policy that we're going to approve now. Here, if we approve this next one that says an individual school board member may on any day and at any time at his or her pleasure visit any school in the district. The board member must sign in and sign out at the school's main office and wear his or her board identification badge at all times while present on the school premises. The board, the school, or any other person or entity, including but not limited to the principal of the school the superintendent or any other board member may not require the visiting board member to provide notice before visiting the school. The school may offer but may not require to escort or accompany the visiting board member during the visit. And that's pretty much it. I just wanted everybody to agree yeah. on that and yeah. everybody know and i mean that's kind of what we've been doing anyway and out of I mean, courtesy you may give them a call yeah but it's saying that you don't necessarily have to because i've just popped in a lot of times and just as a former, said, hey. as a former yeah. principal and i know sandy was a principal and she would concur that i had several instances where new board members would come in and want to sit in on a disciplinary matter with a parent because a parent really? called them and it really created problems. Sure. And, and I had to ask in the, in the past, as a principal, as a board member, don't ever, please don't get involved in these situations because this is our purview and not really something that is at your level then, because it created a lot of problems. But this is, I'm like Kathy, something has happened. Something well, has happened but also, somewhere. I didn't read the last paragraph. <laughs> Following a visit to the school, a board member may have suggestions and feedback regarding the visit, recognizing that the superintendent directs the work of the staff pursuant to Florida Statute 1001.51 and 1012.27, paragraph 7. The board member's feedback should be directed to the superintendent, who will then share it with his staff as appropriate. Or the area directors, as you directed right. or at the beginning as appropriate yeah. whichever he wants to do but, but you don't go directly to the principal right and, exactly yeah. right. we refer people when i get called some people i tell them to go to the chat have you talked to the teacher have you talked to the principal you know and then the area directly the same, that. same but protocol we have now if you have an issue we ask that you talk to myself or my immediate staff right. you know make us aware of it as a, in a principal, it, I, any school, if a school board member comes on campus, it travels through the grapevine in less than three minutes. Everybody knows there's a school board, board member on campus, and you're kind of like, to them, the president walking around or... or not with me. Uh, not I mean, with I mean, me. Really, no. they're, they're kind of, most of them yeah. don't know you, and they're nervous. So yeah. it's always better to check in at the front office and let them know you're on well, campus. Well, I can't... I mean, we have to. Okay. We have to go through the rap, Raptor system. Okay. Well... Right? Correct. Don't you? When you go to James oh, A. Long? I yelled at him. Not all the time. Well, you're supposed to, Mr. I, Buckles. I test them to see if they're <laughs> watching. <laughs> I, I take another lunch up there. I go through the system pretty we, Well, we're yeah. supposed to all show our driver's licenses and run it through the system. Okay. A motion? 
I, I'd like to make a motion that we approve bylaw number 0172. All in, all in favor? Second. Got a second. 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 The, Ms. Gilliard, I think, seconded second. the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. The next item is deletion of policy number 9210 and number 2252 per NEOLA update 7 2 and 18 1. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we delete policy number 9210 and policy number. Two two five two. Is there a second? I second the motion. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Number three, adoption of updates to policy 5111.01, per NEOLA update. 17-2. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the adoption of the updates to the policies as you listed them. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And number four, adoption of updates to policy 2111-2431-2520. 5200-5600-5780-6550-9150-9270 per NEOLA update 18-1. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion okay. that we approve the updates to policies you listed with the exception of number 5200 for discussion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, 5200 is on our attendance policy, and it was like the first lots of pages were crossed out, and it's like almost a whole new thing. Um, and there was a place where we should be picking. Here it is. Okay. Each this is with regards to attendance. We may or may not check this box, and it's not checked the way it is. A student who is absent more than nine days without a semester, within a semester, or more than four days for schools on a block schedule will not receive a passing grade for the semester unless, and then there's three things we can, we can check one or two or all, or none. Medical evidence is presented to the principal in writing justifying a specified number of days absence. Absences are for approved school activities or absences are approved by the principal or designee. So we so, didn't check any of them. What's, because it what's says the one, question? two, or all. Well, yeah. the question is, do we want... Are you asking us to pick which ones... No, nobody said anything, but if right. we don't no, check this, check. Right. but if we don't check this, then, well, it's not included. If you don't check it, it's not included. It's not included, and then they so have then no they way don't of have getting a passing grade. Uh, At this way, least way, this way, they can get a passing grade. I still think that the key here is that are approved by the principal or designee, and even if there's a check, a, a box, I think the principal has a right to be consulted to intervene and there's going to always be extenuating circumstances Some that we don't cover school board policy and that's why we're very flexible and we're, so we can rule against our policy. But I, I don't under, quite understand, Kathy, talk to me again about the, the box you're talking about. See these three boxes? So basically at this point, I know that when we have that occur the principal looks at the data looks at all the skyward data the notes what's been turned in and makes a, a dis, you know whether or not the case case determination case. yes case but it, if you read this you all select one two or all right and yeah. at this point our policy this new policy but we don't even have to check that box no you don't you can because have there's somewhere that. else where we say right. absences are not supposed to be reflected in the grade if the kid if the student 
knows the subject matter. Right. Even though they've had a lot of absences, they get the grade. That was some year. Well, that's yes. where it says if they the have student, excused the absences. absences. The student yeah. demonstrates mastery of the student yes. performance standards in the course as identified in curriculum guides or adopted textbook. Right. Then, but that's then they can. Not, it's almost are, like it's almost like you can clip the absence, and and because of their grade, if the principal if your absence decides, is excused. Yes. If the principal decides to excuse the right. absence. I guess it's and just then will, they made uh, the wording is confusing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Make up for, for right, the content. make up for absences. Yes. Just have reasonable balance yes. time to Do complete we need to work missed yes. or or yeah. other or I'm other items yeah, not because approved above that the principal so to, so at, decides to approve. At this point, Sharon, where you have them written those three um, one, two, or all, they're written in the policy, but they're not checked. So I guess it's a little clear. These, So we would add all of those additions. If you wanted all of those. So by not checking in, it would well, check It's saying they're all available. Okay. Right? No, if we don't check that box before a student who is absent more than nine days within a semester or more than four days for schools on a block schedule, will not receive a passing grade for the semester unless, then we're not saying that either. We're just so, so confused. Not yeah. it. Is that maybe Mr. Superintendent, have your, have your instructional team got a recommendation on this? It, I'd like to make a motion that we table boxes. this. Sir? I would say check all three boxes so they all apply. Yeah. I, that's what I would do, but I, I'm not. I'm, I see but, Kathy's point at the same time. But then below it, there's 12 you know, I mean, school activity, personal illness, court right. appearance, medical appointment. Is that something we could maybe table and then um, maybe get a little more clarification on? Or sure, we something? could. A principal yeah. still has, under Florida statutes, the right to approve an, an absence based on information that. But what we're doing exactly. needs but to be in our look policy. For school board policy. Yeah, so it needs to be in our policy. We want some consistency okay. with this. Right. Debbie, do you want to say something? Yes, ma'am. I would say I would leave them unchecked at this time because of our graduation initiative. Um, we are working very hard with our students to help them to achieve their goal of graduation. I would, want, would not want to see us box ourselves into something that may go against that. So I think that's why those were left unchecked at this time, that we could always bring it back and advertise again if we felt we needed to change something. All right, so it would, yeah, it, would, it would be the desire to Thank do what Ms. Jorgerson said, to just table it and let's see how no, it No, let's just not check those. No, we're going we're gonna to include it, and then if we need to address it again. You can bring it up later if we Yeah, up. bring it up later. Fill in any X's and we approve it as presented. Okay. That's a motion. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, at this point, I don't have any public comment cards, so we're going to move right along to our consent agenda. Well, it's kind of new here, do you think? Yeah, well, right. I've announced it. Okay, you announced There's a lady with a public oh, well, comment okay. card right here. Do you need to see it first, Sharon? You want me to read it to you? Mm -hmm. I just missed it. This is um, Lisa DeVito. She will be speaking on the topic of school funding, especially in South Putnam. Yes, hi, good evening. Um, my family has lived in Crescent City since 1941, and um, I just became a full-time resident this summer. Um, and I've just been very concerned at what I see about the level of funding for South Putnam schools. I have no idea what it is like in the rest of the county, so I don't know whether it's equitably distributed or whether, as a very small county, um, Putnam is just um, suffering in that way. Um, but I grew up in Florida. I've lived in a number of counties in Florida, and uh, in my uh, secondary school, time, uh, I went half to private schools and half to public schools. And it is very distressing to me to see that in South Putnam, apparently, um, the capital funding needs are not even taken care of by the official school budget. Um, it has come to my attention that 
uh, a private club is being asked to provide a significant amount of the funding for the high school basketball gym floor, which I'm told is unusable without that. Um, that is a capital expense. Uh, never in all my years have I seen a private group asked to fund uh, a gym floor. That was my experience when I attended private school, um, which as I said, I did for six out of my 12 years. It seems like things have been flipped on their heads. Um, and as well, uh, my church um, helps support the bands here, as do other groups. And um, really, I think if it were not for the extraordinary efforts um, that I have seen from the staff, uh, there would not be a band program. Because really, um, I, I think that they are greatly lacking in their access to usable instruments from what I have seen. Although they do their best and they're wonderful and they go um, to competitions, they really have achieved quite a bit. So um, I just am hoping that the school board is doing its best uh, to communicate with our elected representatives um, because what I see in this small county is very discouraging. And um, it is not really an advertisement, I think, for young families, that's what I'm told. And it's not really an advertisement for people to come here when you are coming to a place that apparently is getting the short end of the stick on school funding in addition to um, many other needs. So, and uh, I was hoping that we would hear tonight about funding for school safety. Um, I don't see that on the agenda. Um, it was my understanding that small counties got more money in this year's uh, budget for that. But um, the level of funding, I think, is, is of great concern. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Linda, uh, before you sit down. Lisa. Uh, Lisa, excuse me. Ms. DeVito is what I should have said. Uh, we, I worked with a lobbyist a few years ago when I was a board legislative representative, and we picked up a million dollars to add a wing on to middle, middle, the old Crescent City Elementary School, which was, you know, it, it, we, we wound up putting a wing there so we could go back to a kindergarten through grade five situation instead of a, a K-3 and then a, a four, five, and six, and then having the junior, senior high at the high school. And we did that and we, we pick up, I know we, we put half a million dollars the board has in city water and sewage to run down, you know, all the way down Union Avenue from town to help houses add on and, and to fund, you know, to right. go to. Well, I'm not faulting you. I'm just saying I've lived in other counties in Florida that are larger and more wealthy, and they have funding problems too. Right. I'm just saying that it's been an eye-opener to be here full-time and to see the conditions and compare them. So, um, you know, I'm just encouraging okay. you. Well, I'm not you. faulting you because I know that the school funding is not an easy um, task whatever county you live in but I would say that um, as hard as Putnam tries I uh, my suspicion is is that small counties um, need more help it, that we, is we, my yeah. suspicion we certainly do you're, and um, you're hundred percent correct so I am encouraging you to um, work on that and to get your citizens to yeah. work on that because um, the money doesn't come, you know, uh, all, all by itself. But I, I'm not faulting you in the least. I'm just okay, saying no, I, I, I think that Putnam is struggling more than other places that I have seen and that one reason is the formulas. for, And, and, and they're very complex. And not many people down this far south realize that we're in the middle of the cross Florida greenways that run through the other side of Palatka. And that is the, the, the more populated, wealthier counties around us really don't want industry to come to Putnam County that help our property values go up. So that you'd, you'd have to have a, an interstate connector come through. And I saw Bill Pickens here a while ago. I'm sure he's well, all over that. I'm not asking for an interstate connector, but I know there are funding <laughs> well, formulas. I know there are funding formulas. I know there are small counties. And I'm just saying, uh, Putnam, I think, needs help, and there's a, hopefully a place to get it a little bit. Okay. So that was the extent of Thank what you. I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, Without asking for an interstate. We'll try harder. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, now to the consent agenda. Ms. Gilliard, do you have anything you'd like to pull? No, I'm, I'm satisfied. All right. Ms. Jorgensen? E2. Ms. Cummings? I'm good, thank you. Mr. Buckles? I'm good. Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve consent agenda minus E2. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Madam Chair, um, what I'm asking to be included in the minutes is our request for a workshop on school safety. It didn't appear in the minutes, though we did indeed request one, and I would just like it reflected in the minutes before I approve the minutes. Do you agree? I've asked several times in the past, and, and we had other pressing issues that I was kind of... But we had to put it off, but I agree with you. you yeah, well, and I made a re special request okay. at the meeting. At the yeah. meeting. Like that so, on the record. And it's not reflected I agree in with the, that. that it should be in the, It was under board member reports, and I understand that it would have been impossible to capture accurately those long speeches we each gave. Right. But during that, we did ask for a board meeting and I just, a workshop, workshop on safety, and I'd just like the minutes to reflect that. It's not that we're not trying to meet. So we just did. I also, it, when I was looking at the minutes, there was a couple, um, during the public comments, I... Um, yeah, who tallied? I, there was a tally, and I'm not sure, like, there was one I know for sure was left blank that was um, an opposition, but I wasn't sure why... Lynn Freeman. We, yeah, I wasn't sure if we needed to correct it that way or who made those decisions to say, because there's a lot of left blank and maybe... Yeah, because Joe was, was too. Yeah. Oh, okay. did they write that? Oh, well, okay. some, yeah. So some wrote it and some didn't write it. Okay. Yeah. I was just wasn't sure. I was looking for Got clarification it. how that was. I, yeah, yeah, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. That makes sense. Okay. Perfect. All right. That's great. So maybe okay, the minutes Chairman. you could put on there. Uh, in support or opposition according to the card Cards. submitted to the board chair prior to public comment. Okay. 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 That, would be good. that would clarify it. Anything else about the minutes? I'd like to make a motion, Madam Chairman, that we um, accept the school board meeting, meeting minutes for the March 16th regular meeting with the addition Ref with it to reflect the addition that the board requested a safety workshop on safety and also that the opinions expressed in the minutes came off the cards that the people who wish to spoke filled out. I second that motion. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Emergency. We're going to go out of regular session into emergency session. Madam Chair, can I begin, please? Yes. First of all, um, I think this is a mistake. We don't have a Putnam County School Police anymore, do we? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. We have a school May. police? Yes. Consisting of Christy May. Yes. Travis. And Travis is the uh, police chief. Oh. I think I we never that. dissolved that. I believe that was part of the... No, once We've just did, never it would talked be, about it as being that. that. Right. I know that when I was superintendent, we put that in, and it would be very... I think it would be not in our best interest to have dissolved that. Yeah, we've maintained that. We, we've we lost some staff, but we still have the, yeah. the district the, police force. The police force, in fact. Okay, I didn't realize that. I and they drive those to police cars? And they mm -hmm. monitor school mm -hmm. cameras and... Mm -hmm. parking lot okay. stuff. I didn't yeah. really. So, um, so Tra um, oh, I'm sorry. I just okay, want to clarify. No, Travis is like the director of that. Like the police chief. Okay. Right. Okay, well, I have no problem with it then. I just didn't understand that we still had a police force in effect. So, I'm happy to make a motion to approve this item. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Now, Madam okay. Chair, I'd like to go on. There was an item that I asked you to put on as an emergency item, and I believe you asked the secretary, the superintendent, to put it on. And it didn't get on. Why didn't it? I was not given a reason. Why didn't it get on? Which item are you referring to? It was the letter from Pasco County. 
Yes. Or Pinellas County, one of the P counties. Pinellas, I think. Yeah, and then we Pinellas. received another one from, from Duval. Uh, Duval County, but I didn't, I didn't request that just because I had not gotten a, a for an answer on the, the other one. Both counties of which you speak are some of those, as Ms. DeVito would have described, the more progressive, wealthier counties, and they have certainly bigger budgets for law enforcement and probably have their own police forces. I don't, I don't know that, but uh, I, I assume you're talking about the... Well, it wasn't to, to agree the, with it or oppose it. It was just to discuss it, to talk about oh, it. Oh, okay. It's more okay. of a policy. As a, yeah, more of a policy. Okay. Um, Point of yeah, we still haven't been able to talk to each other. But, you know, and I want to say something. I haven't formed an opinion on the STAR program. I have formed an opinion about the way this has been presented to the board, which it hasn't been. Presented at a, a national news conference. That's when we learned anything about this. And that's my gripe. Not putting schools and dogs, uh, guns in schools on putting, that hasn't been what I'm upset about. What I'm upset about is the way this was rolled out. And maybe if you watch it two or three times, and you listen to the words carefully, carefully, the superintendent said probably and most likely, and we weren't committed, but I think the general public got the opinion that this was happening immediately. Indeed, school personnel were calling me about it. So my objection all along has been with the way this has been handled. The school board by law, <coughs> makes policy for the district. Nothing has changed that. Let me, know, let me respond, go ahead and finish. And well, I'll the respond. only thing 7026 did was give the sheriff the ability, if he so desires, to do that. But it's still policy, and the school board decides policy. Okay, I understand that. And I called each one of you the day before the press conference. And informed you, did not poll, but I informed you that we would have a press conference. No, 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 you did not. No, you did not. You said you, you wanted not. us to know you'd been having talks with, with Gator. That's what you said. Then you texted us about the, the press conference the next morning. Okay, I apologize. I did call you to inform you that we were uh, working on a plan, and a plan is a proposal. I understand at the time uh, this would be a this would have to be a policy change. So again, I did not decide anything except we were developing a plan. A plan is something I would bring to you at some point in time. That's what you told me. Right. Told me. Now, since that time, there's been, the legislature has taken action on that. And I asked- well, I would I hope you'd bring the plan to us too. before you made a national television announcement. I would just think that's how the board and superintendent are supposed to work, that we shouldn't get a text to attend a national press conference, show up, and find out about the plan. And that's what happened. You know that's what happened. Okay. Um, the fact that that wasn't on the agenda, I don't understand. When the, when the chairperson asked to put something on the agenda, here is a bylaw. Here is our bylaw about agendas. The superintendent shall establish the agenda for school board meeting in consultation with the school board chairman. I can read the whole thing to you, but that right there means if she wants something on it, it should be on it, and it's, it wasn't on there. Okay, one thing, one, thing I was, one reason for that is the nature of what we are discussing is a sensitive matter, and it is on the... Um, executive session agenda for us to talk about today as far What's as security on the agenda? security if you look at your agenda security is on the executive session agenda. we can't have an executive session for security at this point when we haven't decided what security we're going to be using well that's what the topic of discussion is and if you'd like to talk about it it's on the agenda during executive session which means they have to all leave that is correct I will not talk about it out of the sunshine at this point. Okay. No, sir. I want to talk to my fellow board members about it first. How dare you imply that we should drag it out of the sunshine and talk behind closed doors? And, and 
I, I'm sorry. I just don't know how when the chairman of the board, we, you are our secretary, and My we Lord. ask you for a workshop and it is ignored. That's unacceptable behavior. And now we're supposed to go out of the sunshine instead and instead, talk. Instead of having a workshop. Instead, decided executive session when every one of these board members has asked for a workshop and not and been denied. That's not acceptable. Okay. And you can't choose to say we're putting an executive without when the board says we want a workshop. Okay. We will, we will be glad to schedule a uh, board workshop on safety. When would you allow that schedule? We're going to do Madam. that ourselves right now, I think, okay. uh, Mr. Well, Superintendent, so while we all have our calendars. So then for the executive session, we'll just do the collective Thank bargaining you, portion yes. and not Yes, and not absolutely. 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 We don't have to... We don't have to discuss something the board doesn't feel comfortable. I, and I, I'm and not I, I discussing just wanna, that out of the sunshine yeah, yet. And I not just, yet. I just want to clarify, Rick, that I just felt like my email should have been responded to. I, when I got the emergency item, you know, and I asked to have it put because I knew it was too late to put it in the regular agenda. Mm -hmm. And so when I asked for it to be in the emergency section, I never got another another response and so when we got the emergency items through our email and I read it and it wasn't there then I sent another email saying that it should have been on there and then I still haven't received a reply so I, I guess I just felt like I, I was owed the courtesy of an email or a written or some mm -hmm. kind of explanation of why you felt like we shouldn't have a school safety workshop. Okay, I apologize, and uh, if you'd like to schedule one, okay, please do so. Okay. I, I even think if you went back and looked at the records, you would find it. And I'm not. He, Rick's, a, Rick's a big guy. He can handle any criticism he gets. But uh, they they told me the, the several times that they would try to plan one in the spring and. I know it's spring turkey season, so that should, shouldn't be far off. So we're about. Can we fit you in? We're about on record here for that. So uh, uh, I, uh, I, I had no problem understanding the timing due to what happened at the Parkland School and why this came became an issue. So I, I understand how it came up so fast and so quick and so rapidly. And it would be nice if, uh, if the board could have met and talked about, about it first, but knowing that the legislature had something pending we and we needed to mesh our plans with what may come from the legislature, I'm sure that that's now what we're going to do now. with what's coming. So okay. I appreciate it. We have mm -hmm. MTSB. Thanks. He's got his West Putnam area accounts. You want to do it on Monday? Sure. Yeah. We can't Monday. do it next week. Oh, it's spring break. It's next week. Spring was break. It's next week, correct? Yes. Okay. Monday. Monday. Would, April 2nd. Board members, would you look at April 2nd, Monday, April 2nd, Mr. Buckles? How does that sound to you? Unless I've got a doctor's appointment. I don't have it on my, I don't have my phone right now. So. It so, sounds good. Let's so all plan so right now. You're not hunting? You're not hunting? No, not at, not at, not at 7 o'clock. Okay, I, I, I want to make sure the date's okay it's first. Um, 10. 10? 2? 10 good. If we're going to do this, I would like to, I think like this is going, to, we're going to need more people. We're going to need deans and to hear from them firsthand on what their perceptions are. The people that where the rubber meet the road every day and they're not sitting up here behind a dais and they don't really know what's going on when, a, you know, the word's out that a kid's got a firearm at school or there's a bomb threat or, or the bomb in the bathroom and, and I, I think we need to hear try to find a time well, when Rick can if you can do that after school it would be helpful that'd I, be fine with like me and I would like I sent two weeks ago I sent a list of questions in those emails that I sent that I would really like answered and I think that would be the appropriate time to do it and it was about individual schools and what they're doing and what's since the Parkland incident, if, right. if anything has changed and what they've done to beef up security, and just easy questions to answer. I had some clarification. Okay. What time would you like the workshop, um, the workshop? Would four give everybody time to get there, or why would you rather four? have it at five? Why don't we well, do you? You schedule four, four or four. seven. Four. Four o'clock. Okay. Um, Principals, can y'all get here at four? Five? No. Can you get here at five? 
Well, the one thing that when do we Charlie has a, pre a <coughs> conference call that I'm very interested to hear about. So he needs to be here because he's got the one. With oh, the can you be there April 2nd? Yeah. Yes. Oh, you can? At 530? Yeah, sure. Whenever. It's the pleasure of the board. Dr. Shelby, 530. And please make sure Travis, Travis, Travis. Travis. Because I'm more interested in what Charlie's his has got a conference call with the FS, uh, well, the Attorneys Association okay. discussing the bill itself. And that's right. why I kept saying I have a lot of questions and I've emailed or told him I want an answer to this. I want an answer to that. The Senate bill, there's a lot of details that haven't been discussed. Will have so, great effect on what we do. Correct. So there's a lot of discussions that he's going to have hopefully at 9 a.m. and then there'll be more to come after that. So I feel like that would be imperative to hear those um, Let's tonight. say five o'clock, board members. David, I'm fine. Nikki, yep. Kathy. April second. Second. That's the week we come back. Is five okay with you? Yes. Five o'clock. Five o'clock, Sharon. Okay. I just okay. making sure because we had talked about a lot of different. And this will be advertised for the public. Oh, it has to be. Okay. Yes, and please make it. Please, when you advertise it, Sharon, am I am I speaking for us all? I don't want to speak for us all if it's not true, but isn't our intent that this workshop be to gather information and talk to each other, and this is not the time for public input? Just staff? Right. Uh, we've had oh, public okay. input. I mean, you know, I guess if somebody had something really exciting. Well, they can come to the school board meeting the next day and interlock in with public input. <laughs> If they were there and wanted to say something, I just don't think. I think if we have public input, it could be go on to way past well, bedtime. I mean, and we've had workshops in the past that are open to the public, so I'm not sure how the, our bylaws would read on that. They're because if I, I, just I believe it. there is a bylaw that says uh, that just, uh, just public comment is not required at right. every meeting, okay. um, as long as it is not required, but can it, it as long as it's made available. Um, at another meeting, yeah, as we're gonna be Mr. Buckles mentioned, together. there has been some public comment. If the board would like additional comment, it's certainly within the purview. Uh, but I can uh, confirm that that's the, the language. I'm going from memory here, but I, I don't believe that there is a, a requirement for public comment at a workshop. No, there isn't. Just board meetings themselves. There's, I'll, there's, I'll confirm that. If you, have, if you have a workshop and you allow public comment, we're just gathering the same comment. You, you know that you got a group of people that don't want any guns in schools, even on armed law enforcement officers, and you got a big group of people that want armed, trained people in schools, whether they be law, law enforcement officers or their trained designees. And I, that's not everybody, every teacher and every custodian or cafeteria worker having a gun on them. That's, that's however the state law and the new programs mesh out and whatever this majority of this board decides to do so that'll be that'll be what we need to talk about and i think as far as public input we've all got the the sniping on on facebook and everything that we've seen where some like it and some i think, just ignore it i think it's crazy you know but uh, and that's not what this workshop's going to be about it's just to get well, some what, answers you that's know what it will turn into if we make it a you know you'll have somebody pick up 35 kids from a center somewhere and bring them in. Oh, no, 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 no. I can be tough. Well, I've, I've filled auditoriums, I understand. <laughs> and, but, but I would like as many principals to be there that can be there, you know, and if not, let them send. You need, they gonna go against you it? need the people that, you, but you, I mean, need, that's, the, you need the people that I deal with this. I need some answers, though, about what we're doing now. Yeah. Okay. Well then, okay. I, that's why I was going to say I hope Travis is available and will come and give us a report as to what our current, right now, today, safety program looks like. Okay. And then it may vary from school to school. And it may yeah. vary from school to school. Because I know at Palatka High School, they've, you know, they they're doing some things differently now, and um, I'd know, also like to know from I would say. Um, I guess John Chastain as to which, if any, of our schools are totally fenced in. 
then I don't know if there's any way of getting even a rough, 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 rough estimate. They, they would know pretty much because yeah, we spent a fortune but, since the you know, co just, column by the Are we years talking ago? hundreds of thousands or millions or whatever and with that? I just want to explore options yeah, with people, you guys because I have news for you. I have a lot of respect for each one of your opinion. I really do. You're all coming from different places. And I'm coming from my own, and I really do. I and can't wait to talk to you guys about this. And just something, you know, I, it probably may be cost prohibitive, but um, finding out the cost of the kind of doors that we have at the county office where you have to be buzzed in, you know, what, what does that look like in cost? You know, just things like that. I mean, okay. School safety workshop, Monday, April 2nd at 5 o'clock in the boardroom in Palatka. Okay. And we'll be oh, looking yeah, we got for to staff to have a report. Travis should bring us a kind of off the cuff report as to what our school safety program looks like now at each school. And then if John Chastain or whoever the superintendent designates would bring us some idea of cost of fencing, if that's going to be an option. And also, somebody needs to find out how much those doodly wop uh, metal detectors cost. I mean, I would like to examine all options at this one workshop. Could we just say to email our questions to Travis that we've gotten and the well, ones you've already asked to be answered? I think I sent those to Travis. Send them all to me, and then I'll okay. gather Thomas, Thomas I sent mine to Travis Rick and Travis, and so. I sent mine to Travis. I'm, I'll try to find it and forward it to you. Know, you. And, and this applies, I, I see Sharon spell over there. This would apply as far as I'm concerned to transportation Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. We heard from that one. I really have to, I, I really have a problem with some of the problems that her bus drivers will encounter in outlying areas. But I, I can tell you, you can, the, the wire, it, it, I've been through this before after the Columbine thing and, and I can remember the people in neighborhoods complaining that schools look like penal institutions because we put wire up and fences well, I remember and hearing that. through it. So just, just, we just need to research this very carefully. I Sometimes agree with you that. can't win for losing. Nope. But yeah, the things that things are, are different now. Yeah. Aren't going to cost us much for the schools to already have in place. And I'm sure they've already begun doing some things differently at the various schools. Also, our CFO, Ms. Rhonda Odom, will be able to tell us how much money we're getting. And it's all categorical, but at least what money we have for which categories and how we'll be allowed to spend what we're getting. We'll find that out at the workshop, too. And that all makes a difference yeah, in our decision. Now, the funding that's come down for the sheriff's program, that's separate funding. That would go right to him. That has nothing to do with our well, funding. He, not, he, he not said thank you. All the funding comes through the same schools program. We don't need any. It yeah. comes through y'all. Oh, you really? Contract with us and it comes to us. The resource officers? Has, Yes. yes. Okay, this yeah. guardian you program would is resource officers through your school safety. That program. I know. Yes. yes. And we then there's any money. There's an additional resources. appropriation that will be coming to the school district to be used exclusively for school safety. I don't know what that figure is, Dr. Sergeant you may have some. Well, but that's not the, the the dollar amount you quoted for the we STAR program. I would say it's an additional four to five hundred thousand dollars if I'm not. Okay. I've got it. Chair, do you have any water right there? <clears throat> Let me get to the right one. I'm looking at my budget amendments right now that has all the cuts in FEFP, so let me get to the New Year stuff. I've got that in the back. Our um, categorical amount for next year for school safety is $790,220. That's an increase of $493,447. So um, that's how much fl extra, flex e extra dollars for school safety that we'll have. And it does say in there that it needs to be used for school resource officers. Um, well, let me, 
back up. When they, they increased the base, the base for school safety this year we're in is 62,550. They increased the baseline to 250,000, so everybody would start with that amount. Then based on our crime index, we got another $142,204. Based on our number of students, we got 75,930. And then we got a separate line item that says school resource officers. And every bit of that, 322,088 has to be used for school resource officers. So again, you know, the entire categorical is $792,000. $220, and that's uh, 493000 more than we are currently receiving. Do you, do, you, do you have any idea if they've taken it from another part of your budget that you're going to be? I hope not. They didn't take from another part of our budget, but they really didn't give us but $0.47 cents per student and uh, flexible spending this year. That's Putnam right. overall mm -hmm. received. That's where they got it. Yeah, they Putnam don't. overall received one million two hundred ninety-nine thousand two hundred thirty-five dollars more than we did than we're currently getting, and uh, safe schools is four hundred ninety-three thousand of that. The mental health allocation, which we're still looking into, is three hundred thirty-seven thousand of that. So good. That's so good. Yeah, they, 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 right. they take it out of one hand and put it there. <coughs> Can that only be spent on mental health? Yes. In the schools. So. And then the uh, flexible dollars that can be used to fund, whether it's um, the raises, the automatic raises for our instructional and classified that's built into the schedule or whatever we need it for is a total of $487,000. So I, we do receive 487000 more this year. But I will say that they, our, they decreased our required local effort again. We're now under four mils, but our property values went up. So of that 487,000 of increased flexible funding for the district, um, the amount that came from local is um, 330,331. So the majority of the flexible spending that we have available to us this year came from local property taxes because of the increased value people will see their millage rate go down for the school district, but because their property values went up, it still won't be considered a tax increase because uh, they went, yeah, they went with a rollback rate. Always has been. Mm -hmm. And what was that amount again for school resource officers? For school resource officers? 322,088, uh, that's a separate allocation. We're already spending more than that, but it does say that that particular dollar amount, there's no flexibility with that. It has to go for school resource officers. And so, Chef Deloach, in order to, to train or to put another resource officer in a school, just a ballpark figure. Sure, 60, round it off, I guess. You got your sheets here that you sent us? Rhonda has some of the same information that I have here, so I'll just go off of her notes. So essentially, if the board's will is to fully fund a youth resource deputy program and put a youth resource deputy at every school, which would include an additional 12 youth resource deputies, we're looking at a, an initial capital outlay of about $1.45 million or approximately, well, I'll give you an exact figure here, to fully equip a youth resource deputy uh, for the first year is uh, $110,731.11. Um, now, there's an annual recurring cost associated with that of 71000 so you can back that out of the 110, and that's those, uh, those initial startup costs include the purchase of the vehicle, weapons, and all the equipment ancillary to that. So right now, with that additional funding, we're looking at anywhere between three and four additional officers. Right, and then we, we have far more schools than that. Right. That we currently have planned. So, so if you want to have, like you said, a, an officer at every school, is going to take the funding is going to have to come from somewhere because of what we're getting from the state is not ad adequate. Right. Right. And we knew they wouldn't fund it enough. That's if you don't move. Can 
They could. They, have they could to. possibly they have figure to. out an agreement, but it would be. It would have to be with the board, and I don't know if the law would even allow it, even there. They're on our school campus, but, but those are things yeah, that we're going to have exactly. to work out. I just, what she said. I, I just know that the only logical way to do yeah. this is to try to find something like a, a common ground like we're going to discuss at the meeting that's coming up, and that is to find, uh, we've got ex-deputies that are teachers that right. are, have been trained in, in work in law enforcement. We've got ex-military people that have been to war that are teaching. We've got people that could be trained and could be utilized, but that'll be something we're gonna to have to discuss together. And we don't, you know, right now, I guess we're just looking at our agreement, which we need to pass and get together because we need to have something to work on, but then we can always rescind it if we don't like something in it or take it back to the table. Gotta pass it to read it? No, no, do we, this, this. Oh. this Multi-agency agreement? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, did we approve that? Yeah. That's already. Okay. Yeah, that's like 15 yeah. minutes ago. Dave. Okay. Sorry. I just wanted to make, I, I didn't yeah, know we why approved they were it. hanging around. We're on. We've moved on. I just know that yeah, beating my head against the wall after all the years that I've, we forget we haven't done I've worried this. about kids getting killed at school and, and things that I've dealt with and employees being, having their lives threatened and, and and some of the situation we've had where somebody kills somebody at school and they come to school and check out their kids and you don't, you, you just, there's, there, the world has changed and it is dangerous and it's ridiculous that we have to talk about this because we've got a school district and schools across America are scared to paddle kids and now we're talking about putting old guns on kids. So it, it's, but it's something we've got to figure out. We're going to work with you guys to do it because our law enforcement in Crescent City and interlocking and all across the county and Palatka and, and, and you guys, we've got to work together and figure out how to keep our kids safer and our employees. So, I, don't, I don't know what else they want from you, Gator. I mean, it's not, we didn't get enough money to add that many people. You know. Okay, we are going to go out of emergency session and back into regular session. I think I'm just going to stand here because I think I'm next. Yes. Yes. Budget amendments. Budget amendments. Yes. Okay, uh, this is the budget amendments. And as you say, go, go out of emergency back into regular. I'm going out of next year back into current situation. <laughs> <laughs> and these are the budget amendments for January of 2018. This is the one I think I may have talked to you briefly about, but it's the one where we get um, all the cuts or additions based on our FTE and based on uh, different things that come out like McKay scholarships, the FTE audit, things along those lines. So um, for January, when we received our third FEFP uh, funding, we were cut $861,733 in the general fund. I'm gonna give you the breakdown of that. I've got it all here and something different you'll see. I've done some color coding. You don't normally see all of that stuff, but I wanna be able to explain different categories. We'll, we'll do the easy stuff first. We received uh, a donation from Seminole Electric Pre-K -pre for STEM. That was $550. We received a donations for the backpack program and feed the need through payroll deductions, and that's $125. Uh, we received the charter school capital outlay that's transferred in to appropriate to the charter school seven thousand three hundred and fifty seven dollars everything else in that category in that top bracket of de decrease in revenue came from the third calculation fefp we received a decrease in our advanced placement fte of four thousand six eighty seven eleven we received an increase in industry certified fte these are add-on ftes that we get added and they do a placeholder when they start the calculations for the year, they put last year's number in until they receive all the scores that qualify for the additional FTE and that hits in the third calc. So um, as mentioned, industry certified increased by $6,005.53, increase in early graduation FTE, $417, an increase in ACE, which is the Cambridge program add-on FTE, $53,842.19. We had a decrease in the virtual ed contribution 
$1,094, a decrease in the reading grant categorical of $1,614, a decrease in the safe schools categorical of $496. We had the decrease in student transportation categorical of $281,128, and we had discussed the loss of students there at a couple of uh, board meetings that we had. We knew that was coming. We had received an increase in instructional materials, that's textbooks and library media of 6,991. We received a decrease in the digital classroom categorical, $1,092. A decrease in the SAI categorical of 22,889. We received an increase in the lowest 300 categorical. Again, they had put a placeholder in there because they didn't know which schools would be right. in the lowest 300. So we got an increase of 242,598. We received a decrease in discretionary lottery funds of 142,673, a decrease in class size categorical of 77,165. The McKay scholarships um, that were taken out to, they, this is when they took the McKay scholarships out and gave to the private entities. So that lowered our uh, revenue of 361,572. Mm -hmm. That was money that was taken from us and given to the private entities. We had the prior year FTE uh, trans transportation funding audit adjustment, $56,213. We were decreased by that. One positive in all of the third calculation, FEFP, that we received an additional allocation. I guess they had some leftover dollars and they spread it based on FTE, so we received $12,290. And we received a decrease in district FEFP due to a decrease in our FTE, and that was $231,285. So overall decrease of 861733 A lot of it's in categoricals, but a lot of it had to hit the fund balance. But as you'll recall, I always do set asides. They're usually pretty close. Um, so this is where my color coding comes in. Fund balance overall was decreased by 800000 The rest of uh, everything was absorbed into the different categoricals that were reduced. So I had set aside $350,000 for my K. And it came in at 361, 572. So I took the 350 that I had set aside, and I needed 11,572 uh, more. So I took it from the She's reserve amazing. for FEFP cuts that I had set aside. Um, for the prior FTE audit adjustment, they're like three or four years back. I set aside $50,000. They cut us 56,213. So I reduced the 50,000, and then I took the balance of 6,213, and those are in red. Those came from uh, the reserve for FE, FP cuts. And then also the other thing that I had set aside was in case we were short on FTE. Last year we had a small increase, but this year um, we were down 101 students over uh, what was projected. And mm -hmm. we were only projecting at an increase of eight students over last year. There's mm -hmm. projection wizards that we do. I go to Tallahassee and spend a day, and we go through those wizards and try to, they, they work through it too, and try to come up with the most accurate can. projection mm -hmm. at, that we can. But I think what hit us a little hard is that the, um, the incoming kindergarten class was not near as large as the graduating senior class this year. Because uh, we usually run, that's yeah. always the, we, we run the students through yeah. assuming yeah. everyone's moving up a grade level and everyone's graduating when they're supposed to. And then we look at the births in Putnam County for the five years prior. We try to estimate that, but that's where a big difference was. So we were down, like I said, 101 students. And I had only set aside 200,000 for that. So um, I had to take the additional 31,000 from that reserve for uh, FEFP cuts. When all was said and done, I lowered all of our reserves to zero other than the 3%, and I've got that in green under, under notes down there. Um, I took 170,000 from transportation's budget. I did an analysis of it, what I expected them to spend for the rest of the year. So I was able to pull some from their budgets and um, the rest were, was covered by moving so that I didn't have to go into the 3% and that fund balance that we're proud of, we, we built this year. Uh, I looked at capital outlay expenditures in the general fund and I knew that they were allowable in the capital fund. So I did some chargebacks and charged some things to some capital funds that were very old funds that uh, were not part of John's um, five year plan. So I you know, spoke briefly with him. So we were able to do all of that, and what is now left in our fund balance reserves, we've still, of course, got the inventory figure. 
We've got the 3% mandated fund balance, which is $2.4 million. We've got the unreserved fund balance of $792,400.93. And then we've still got one more audit payback, and that's from the best and brightest. DOE has still not given us, right. you know, the, and this is from two or three years ago, because there hasn't been a signing in that since then, but those are um, the ones that we paid out that the Auditor General's office right. said that they should not have been paid. Right. So we're having to pay those funds back, but I've got the money set aside. So right now, fund balance is 3,784,953.94. So I think in all the years I've been doing this, this is the first time the general fund took a whole page. But there were a lot of cuts, a whole lot of cuts this time. Uh, in capital projects, we uh, had an increase of revenue of 7357 and that's, that's the charter school dollars. It all goes to, uh, yep. to them. In school food service, there was no change in revenue. They just made budget changes as needed within the different objects in the school food service funds. In special revenue, there was an increase of revenue of 51867 uh, 24730 of that was for the District Instructional Leadership and Faculty Development Grant, and 27137 was for the Adult Education and Family Literacy Grant. In the Internal Service Funds, which is NEFEC, there was no change in revenue, and they just made various changes as needed within the Internal Service Funds and projects. And that concludes the budget amendments for January. Thank Any you. Questions? I have something I'd like to say. Okay. Please don't ever retire. <laughs> Please. You're, you're amazing. It's getting harder and harder and to be want able to do this because they're making it so hard for I us. Know. You know, it really, if, we, if they would fund education, public right. education the way it needs to Thank be. Thank you for having the foresight to Thank you, Ron. Thank you. have some reserves set aside. Set aside. Yeah, it's very impressive. Well, you don't become the, the president of the, or the head of the school finance director. So that'd be a I know. I know. And I'm well. glad she's ours. Yep. Madam Chairman, I'd make, like to make a motion that we accept the budget amendments for January 2018. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next is discussion and input on the instructional materials plan for a science adoption. I know I just saw something with that. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for looking this over. I'm speaking for Ms. France today. Um, what is before you um, lays out our timeline. It's very similar to what we've had in the past. It does keep us in compliance with House Bill 7069 and the changes that happened there. Uh, but this is one of those pieces that keeps us in compliance. Just so you know, we did attend the NEFECT um, fair. Um, for textbooks um, in Gainesville back in the fall. Um, that was well received. We took teachers from both the elementary level as well as the secondary level. We also then have had opportunities for teachers to come in and review the different pieces and to make a recommendation. The only ones that will become before you are those where we had teachers who actually reviewed and made a recommendation. Otherwise, we will stay with the current books that we have. So the only thing that will be brought before you are those where we had recommendations. Do you have any questions for me? I don't. I'd like to make a motion that we approve it. It's not an action item. Well, then, no, then it's then not. It's just for, for just input. Or whatever we're right. do. We will bring the other pieces back and to you at the appropriate time. Every how many years do we look at? Every year there, there's a cycle, and this year is science, then we're going into math. math so each year. time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 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 So now it is time. For our board reports, Mr. Buckles, I'm going to start on your <coughs> end this time. Uh, I have enjoyed going on some school campuses and going to <laughs> ball games. From, not checking from, in. From Antelokan to Palatka. I haven't been down to Crescent City yet, but I've seen some of the kids playing <coughs> up that way and some of the various activities. But uh, I've enjoyed everything from baseball to archery to to softball, it's it's all good this time of year. Volleyball. I look at Holly out there, and that's all I can think about. I bet she's never been to less than three million volleyball <laughs> matches. Anyway, uh, I, I, my concern is 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 and has been not only that the governor doesn't take this funding that he's come up with and pull too much from our other endeavors because we're looking at a pretty good pile of money. 
in our in the superintendent and our board's request for uh, appropriations this year and i just would hate to see that diminished because of a knee-jerk reaction to what's happened in parkland which this is should have been occurring all along and, and i think the people that are in law enforcement <coughs> and that are in schools with the kids every day they know it's it's tough so anyway that's that kind of concludes I look forward to the safety workshop meeting. I think we'll get some good things going, but that's it. Ms. Cummings. Um, I wanted to reiterate the migrant um, um, awesome job that Lucy, they are amazing. They have impacted so many families, not just here, but East Palaka. And I'm just encouraged because I see changes and I see um, even my son's friends that, you know, we talk about college and the things that these kids never maybe thought about before in migrants and they're, they're achieving their goals. So I appreciate all the hard work that's put into that. All of you all that work for the migrant department and just support it, you know, the volunteer work. And there's a lot of great um, opportunities to serve that, that great. So thank you again and all your staff and all your volunteers. I always see them they know the families are in need we got new families we need food can you get them and i'm like yeah absolutely let's you know I load them up and and it's awesome to see so many people collaborate together to to do that um again i want to reiterate the workshop and there's a lot of good discussion and there's a lot of good details that need to be worked out that um, again i look to our attorney because he is in the forefront of the law and the things that he's going to be discussing with us when it relates to the law and there's a lot of policy and procedure and details that again i'm looking forward to uh, exploring so it's a, it's important that it's a a detail oriented conversation and when it is time to have these conversations when the plans are um are in action and, and moving to where it's time to do i definitely would understand the the significance of the confident you know confidentiality so but at this point, I'm just re reiterating the workshop and looking for all the questions to be answered. Um, I think that everybody has a lot of questions, and we all want to make sure we're doing what's in the best interest of our of our schools. So that's a good thing. So in a fair, all those hard workers out there, these kids, oh, my gosh, they're awesome. So keep up the good work, and teachers try to give them a little break when they're sleeping in first period because it's it's hard they are dedicated to those animals and I appreciate all their hard work because that is not an easy task so again thanks to the students and the sponsors who put in endless hours for that so that's all Miss Jorgensen okay um, I'm so happy about the workshop I can't even tell you I'm just so frustrated not in being able to talk to you about this and we'll be able to um, summer driver ed program there's a Doris Slossberg Fund, and I guess the county commissioners applied from it and got it, and the money comes through them, but we'll have Summer's Driver Ed again, thanks to that. Nine groups going in the district, three or four students per group, and I just think that's great. Again, collaboration, community, county working with schools. Um, when we have presentations in the future, I just watched Miss, um, our chair lady stumble a little bit. Could we put the name of the person that's going to be presenting for whoever? Okay. They're both like that. Yeah. Okay. And also, on the next discussion, agenda for discussion, input and possible action. We need to talk about school board committees. We have insurance, calendar, orientation. Well, that's what I'm bringing up. Orientation committee. We also we thought we should orient new school board members. And I've worked on that. And I would like to start a committee. Have you, whatever. Yeah. I'd like to not let that drop through the cracks. And also, um, I had written our attorney and Linda from his firm replied about the fact that as she reads the Sunshine Law, the Sunshine Law applies to any committee that is going to make a, appointed by the board that is going to make a recommendation to the board. That's to be voted on. Hmm. That's to be voted on. If, 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 it has, if there's no action on it, 
I mean, we can discuss it if we're not voting on it. I don't know. I'd like that clarified. But the letter I got from Linda said that when she reviewed, I mean, sentence by sentence by sentence, and she agreed with me that the way the Sunshine Law is worded, if it's a board-appointed committee that's going to go and bring back a recommendation, like the calendar committee and the insurance committee, they are subject to the Sunshine Law. And that's something that the legal department has worked with Sharon on as well in the scheduling of those um, committees and uh, endeavoring to make sure that the, the proper notes are taken and records kept. Kathy, could I add one thing while you're, so I don't forget it. I just, I, I meant to ask the superintendent to look into the gym floor at Crescent City High School because, you know, there, there have been nights when we've had hundreds of people sleeping in there with their families and hurricanes and there ought to be some safe schools money that could be utilized to fix that. I know it probably wouldn't call for the wooden floor that you would need but maybe there's a way that you can find that the board can help them somehow in that deal. Well, actually, construction is starting on that Monday. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, we're replacing that for Monday. Okay. I just but we're, are we paying for it? Well, it's being paid out of uh, partially district funds, and the Rotary Club of Crescent City is also is raising money to assist in that. That's one of their main projects this well, that's year. That's pretty common. Of this Rotary is so mm -hmm. active and so mm -hmm. good down here. Okay. Yeah. So that starts Monday. Is that right, Mr. Shelby? Yes, sir. Not I just Shelby. I just wanted to make sure right. the kids weren't having to sell cookies out on them. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> having uh, a bake sale. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get it done before graduation, just in case we have to use that. All right, Kathy, I'm done. Yeah, okay, and um, so I would like on our next agenda for discussion, input, and possible action. Just so if we want to decide something, we can. Just school board committees discussion of school board committees because I also think we may want to have an orientation committee well and, and I'll tell you this I kind of took it upon myself um, mm -hmm. I guess I'm right now the orientation committee um, and I've spoken to Sharon and she's going to work with me but I've already I've got a notebook of stuff already that mm -hmm. I think would be important new board for right, new board members my orientation was well, I, I didn't get any you either. Been there in the, the only the only orientation I got was in Tampa, yeah, that's and that that really has nothing to do with our local board. So you know, we felt like every time a new board member came on, it would be appropriate for a, you know, not necessarily a mentor, but for us to sit down with that person or people and um, and orient them to how things work on our board. So. I've started on it, and I'll That's get with good. you. That's good. Okay. We can't be on the same committee out of the sunshine. We'd have to add. Okay. Well, it's we not a committee add. now. It's okay. just people working. Okay. And then the last thing I'd like to say, <clears throat> Parkland, when the dust all settled, the school district did what they were supposed to do. They identified a dangerous student and they expelled them. <coughs> um, unfortunately, law enforcement's hands were tied, local law enforcement's. When they get a call, there's a nut down the road with guns. I mean, so do, we, do they go take somebody's guns away because Mrs. McGillicuddy said he, there was no law in place for them to do anything, and now there is. The 7026 also addresses law enforcement's ability to follow up with these anonymous or reported reports when somebody says there's a there's a nut job that lives behind me and he's got all kinds of big guns and he's talking about blowing up a, a plate, whatever. Law enforcement's hands aren't as tied as they were and the FBI's hands aren't. I don't know the details, but there apparently is a waiting period until the person it's a, it's a temporary removal of the guns until the person is psychologically tested and deemed whether or not they can be given their guns back. But it is a mechanism that was not in place before Parkland. Um, and that's what I wanted to say. I'm done, thank you. Ms. Gilliard? Just three quick things. Uh, I'd like to commend all of our 
schools that participated in the uh, prearranged walkout uh, in commemoration of what happened at Parkland. I read in the paper where different schools took on different uh, activities, activities and... to kind of express themselves. Some wrote nice things about other classmates, et cetera. And immediately when I read it, I was reminded of the story where the teacher actually had every kid in the class to write something nice about a classmate. And one uh, was killed in Vietnam. And he actually still had his list of the nice things that were said. Uh, Crescent City High saw them, and they formed the, the number 17 for the number of lives that, was that were awesome. lost. And I want to commend our superintendent and his staff for giving them permission so that uh, students will realize that we are working with them to help them to try and make uh, heads or tails of what is happening now in our society. So that was great. Um, I'm pleased, too, that we're now uh, providing meetings such as this that will allow uh, working parents the opportunity to come and be a part. Even though the school board meetings are our meetings, it allows you the opportunity to come and to share and to hear the things that are happening. And the house was packed um, on the 6th of March and <coughs> as it is tonight. And it shows that you're very concerned about your, your children and the safety of our children. And not because they're not here, we're not saying that they are concerned, but it, it's an effort. And thumbs up to Palaka Daily News. Uh, in their article, they gave the school board uh, a thumbs up for taking the initiative to do this. And again, this was one of the promises what? that we made to do our campaign, and that we would make these meetings as many as possible, uh, well, accommodating for those that have schedules that weren't allowed them. them. And so with the safety, I mean, we're all in the same boat. We're working together to protect our children along with the superintendent and the sheriff. And, and I just want to commend you that you will not just sit in by idling. You're thinking through some things, and you're trying to come up with something that will work to show our, our parents, our stakeholders, that we are concerned about our children. And in the end, we're going to work it out. Thank you, Ms. Gilliard. Um, before I give you my board report, um, I need to consult with my board members. Um, I have asked to have the master board training changed from Wednesday, April 4th to Thursday, April 5th, because I had a conflict. Is that okay with y'all? It fits Tina's schedule. So it's gonna be Thursday? April 5th from nine to one thirty at federal at po programs. Federal programs. I'll check with Sharon and get it to see. Up. Is she running your calendar now? Sharon tells me what to do. He needs to pay you to do that. So Nine a.m. to one thirty. Okay. You okay? Yes, I'm good. Sandy, you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Okay. And David, you'll check your. What day did you say? What May? What month? May. <laughs> April. Fifth. Okay, it's I'm a Thursday. At, I'm looking at going to the Archery Nationals in Kentucky. Well, I may be right? going to that too. Okay. Well, you can't go with me because I don't want to <laughs> drive with you. What time? Nine, <laughs> uh, nine o'clock. My daughter, my granddaughter, shooting in the Nationals. She's our top shooter. Yeah. Okay. And the second thing, we need to have a board workshop prior to April 26 concerning bus purchases. When? When is a good time to do that? When do you think? Our meeting's on that Thursday, April 26th. Yeah. Well, I, that was on a note to get to, for me to mention. So April 26th is a Thursday. Our board meeting is the 17th. Oh. What kind of? Can't we do it on the 17th? <coughs> Why do we need a workshop on purchasing just buses? Will you t explain, Thomas? Mr. Bowen, do you want to mention that? If you, Could we do it the 17th? we are talking yeah. about borrowing do money to purchase buses. Just do it at Yeah, two. it's basically the same thing we did last time. It's a, it's a major purchase agreement, and, okay. and uh, Gary is the one who will actually conduct the workshop. He wants to speak not only about the process but the actual need. 
And that's uh, the guy we buy the buses from, right? No, no Gary. that's the Gary, Gary works in He's our transportation he works for us. lead mechanic. He, he deals with them. Yes, ma'am. I would suggest if it's a good time for y'all, um, April 17th, the Tuesday before, prior to our board meeting, we could do it at 2 o'clock. That works for us. I would feel comfortable field. if I had a recommendation from you guys about it. What, which ones? And well, I ones. have a question, Rhonda. Have we paid for the buses we did this we with? The of that. Oh, we haven't paid them off. No, we. This would get it started. We've got um, two payments left. The uh, last payment will be made in July of 2018, and that sets you up to be able to have another master purchase agreement for the five-year right. running total right. with the first payment not being due until January of 2019. We make two and payments all, annually? We make two payments annually. Can you so a total ballpark of... Ballpark figure what the payments are? Yes, about $350,000 a year. So a year, so, so yes, 175. 175. Um, right. We borrowed $1.7 million last time and got 17 buses. I know, we did 17 mm -hmm. buses yeah. and it took five years, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. So... And, and they were lucky last time in that we were able to use uh, school um, impact money yeah. and they were able to buy That's another right. seven on top of that. So that like, was awesome. They got 20. Yeah, almost five yeah, years ago they had, yeah. they were able to get about 24 buses, but you know, so I'm not sure what all is going to be in the workshop, but it Maybe is we'll get a the timing of it would be that if you so desired, you could go into <laughs> another master purchase get agreement. One. We, if you, in the workshop, if you approve us looking into it, what we would then do is go out for an RFP, and get banks to give us a proposal on what they would lend, but it'll be all whatever you all well, listening to the presentation, number of buses. We're not going out on for RFP on buses? We're just going to... No, we would have to. Oh, we so would have to on once, the buses Once you themselves. have the workshop, if you say, yes, this is something we're interested in looking First into... First look at the interest and then the buses. Yes. Got it. Thank you. Jane, this is a <laughs> Right, so we're going to have it at 2. We're going to have our workshop on buses April 17th at 2 p.m. That's a 7 o'clock meeting. That's a 7 o'clock oh. meeting. Okay. Um, uh, and it's in Palatka. That's what threw me. Yeah, there's um, two in Palatka and then one at oh. each other end. Are we having a superintendent's thing that night? Yes, at 6. No, I think it's... And it's on that same night, Felicia, April 17th, the Superintendent's Council? Yes. Yeah. Well, we could do it at 5. Yeah. You want, how about 4.30? Can you get there by 4.30? Yeah, but not everybody comes. And what are we going to do during the council? Know, 5.30? You can take part in it. Really quick. <laughs> not, not four board and five board members can. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of, it, it restricts. I mean, I always go to them, but... Right. I'm the only one, so yeah. I, I go to the West. Point. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. Here, so. But not this one. Um, well, Monday. It's short. What, 30, 45 minutes? How, how long is it going to take? I don't know what dates we're talking about. Cause I'm 30 minutes. Seven. I don't guess they could move do, it. Oh, you want to do a presentation during the meeting? Too yes. long? Gonna, it would be gonna, too long to present it during the board meeting. It'll all be out the state bid, and it'll be a. We can make it work. It'll be a record. Why don't you do that? Okay, with you, superintendent. Yeah. We'll okay. give you thirty minutes for presentation. How's we'll that? We'll make it fifteen if we do it during the regular meeting. That sounds even better. That's even okay. better. Okay, so okay, X the so work. No X the workshop. No workshop. <laughs> yeah, X that <laughs> workshop. X that workshop. And so we have the seven o'clock regular meeting. Right. It's going, going to be a presentation. It's going to be a presentation. presentation. Under presentations, yeah. Okay, just briefly, I want to uh, reiterate what everyone said about the fair. Um, a lot of hard work going on. We had some, quite a bit of disappointment in friends and family today when their hogs either weighed too much or didn't weigh enough, even though they'd given them cake batter and syrup and hot dogs <laughs> and everything they could think of to get them fat, and it didn't work. But the hog show's tomorrow night at the fair in the Tilton Arena. Yeah, there's a board policy that prohibits cake batter and syrup to go to hogs. Well, we missed out on that okay, one. Okay, I'm kidding. Till Megan Morris. That was a joke. Okay, um, and then they'll show the steers on Thursday night, and that's always such an exciting time, and the kids have worked so hard preparing for this, and, and it, it's just a fun event. And I also want to mention that I took place in the Hunger Fight event um, 
Saturday at Grace Fellowship Church, we packed 48,000 meals, most of which um, are going to our schools for our kids that are in need, that are um, food deprived over the weekends. And it, if you ever get the opportunity to take part in that, you need to because it's, a, it's, a, it's unbelievable how that it just runs like clockwork. And then the last thing I want to mention is that our next school board meeting is going to be Tuesday, April 3rd in Interlochen at Price Middle School. And that will be at seven o'clock. So we're getting, we're hitting every area of the county. Uh, with our night meetings, hoping that we can get more parents and uh, concerned <coughs> citizens to come. So if y'all want to travel from Crescent City to Interlock, and we'd love to have you there. Uh, Board Attorney. All right, the legislature has spoken on 7026, the governor signed into law, and now the question is how it is going to be implemented. And there are districts around the state who are in different camps about their view of the law. And tomorrow morning, I have a conference call with other school board attorneys in other districts, along with the general counsel for the Florida School Board Association, Joy Frank, and uh, together discuss in detail uh, the mechanics of the statute and what we can look for on an administrative side on how the statute will be implemented. So I will have uh, more to offer the board um, after that and uh, work with you uh, in any way, uh, any questions that you have, I've already heard uh, from um, at least one board member on some specific questions. Uh, if you have any of those, please let me know, and uh, our department will be uh, glad to um, dig in and get answers to those. So. Thank you, Charlie. And Dr. our executive session, which we advertise as security, do I hear that we do not want to discuss security tonight? Because our sheriff is going to be here. And I don't want to ask him to remain if you do not want to discuss security in exec well, executive the, session. The board attorney could tell you that I think it, if this could <clears throat> result in in lit possible litigation that you know that we may be facing based on, and I, I think that's going to come to every district that tries to do something at some point. That I think we could probably meet an executive session on that, but it would be up to, to Charlie to I guess rule on that. The Sunshine Law does provide an exception for um, meetings in the shade for security measures. And <coughs> being that it is a security measure, uh, my legal opinion is that it is a proper subject to be in the shade. It is the board's personal decision about the timing of when you want that to occur in relation to a workshop. But or you won't give us a legal opinion as to when the timing should occur. As to whether or not it should occur now before the board has had a chance to talk to each other as to whether a majority of the board even wants to go with that. And I'm not saying a majority doesn't want to go with that, but we don't have any idea now, do we? So what exactly are we talking about out of the public eye, away from the newspapers and the cameras? What is it that we could possibly be talking about today? Let's, let's, and, and that would, You're not through. Go ahead and finish. And well, that would, that would make that okay. I, I'm I just, understand. Because I don't even know what we were main, going to talk if about. If there is something that Travis we need to know in, 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 in a closed Ten session seven. that could possibly save a That's child's right. life or an employee's life between this date and the date of the workshop, I think we need to at least hear it. Well, it's too bad we didn't have a workshop instead of it this is, scheduled. It is. And like we asked. It is. But yeah, it didn't. It we didn't. asked for a workshop, and what we're getting is a secret meeting with the sheriff. Well, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a legal well, meeting. Well, I just need to know: do you want the sheriff here or not? Because I don't want to take his time if you don't want the sheriff here. I guess we better not, Rick. Okay, sheriff, thank you for coming tonight, and I, I apologize for. Is there anything else? Did you have anything else you wanted to I've say? Just, I was just going to say that um, we had good news from the legislature. We actually. Uh, as opposed to our overall funding, we did receive an appropriation oh, yeah. of $250,000. We requested 500000 but it was a matching uh, appropriation for advanced manufacturing. So oh, I do want to, uh, we did avoid the governor's veto pen. Thank goodness. So uh, anyway. Didn't get what we asked for, but we got some. Yeah, and a lot of people did not get funded. There was $64 million worth of vetoes. So we, we were very fortunate to receive this. So that's going to help that improve our... Uh, career and technical education initiative. And uh, just want to 
give a shout out to GP. They helped with some of that matching funding. That's wonderful. To uh, receive that along with some of the money that we put up through our capital outlay money. So anyway, I want to thank the governor for not vetoing that. And that's going to be a, you know, money well spent. That's, that's wonderful. All I have. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>